Hi guys, welcome to another mini PC review. No, it's not an AMD or a quad core Intel, but a dual core Intel in 2020. Chewy thought it would be a good idea to sell a fifth gen. No, I didn't make a mistake, fifth gen. This is a CPU that's in this that was released in September 2014. It is the Core i5, the 5257U. It does have Iris graphics, the 6100. And as you see in this particular review, it is, well, it has a lot of shortcomings, this particular mini PC. Sure, it might sell for 250 US dollars with RAM, with an SSD, and you're ready to go with Windows 10 as the operating system, but there are quite a few things you should definitely be aware of before you consider getting such dated hardware, and there's also a few misleading things from Chewy as well. So here's what you'll find in the box. So we've got some screws here for the 2.5 inch hard drive to mount it inside. We have our SATA 3 cable there, and this is an EU plug, obviously. With that standard connector, very easy to source a replacement. And our power supply, so this is 48 watts maximum output, and that is 12 volts and four amps. So this is the front of the mini PC. It's got a design that looks a little bit like a PC tower case, but just in miniature, which I do like. We have a front power on button here. Sadly, there's no type C on the front, no type C whatsoever on this. I would have liked to have seen two USB 2 ports on the front of this at least, I think would have been good. So they claim on their site that the build of this is a metal case. And well, it's not, it's mostly all plastic. So this part here is plastic. The lid is where you will find some alloy. So they've put this metal on the top here, just this metal plate. Now you can unscrew this and underneath is plastic, so don't even go there, don't bother, you're just wasting your time. Core i5 sticky there from Intel, Chewy is there, and this part here is all plastic. Now on the underside, you will see right here that we do have some intake vents, so they're using this case over various different mini PCs from them. Some nice solid rubber feet here as well. Now they do have a tamper sticker here, which is kind of silly really, because we do need to get inside to install a 2.5 inch drive. So you remove the four screws on the back, or in fact, just loosen them off, and then the case will lift off like so. So you can see there is our cooler, and here on the back is where you would install your 2.5 inch drive. So using the screws supplied, of course, you screw it in there, and then you plug it into the motherboard. So here you will find our SSD. So this one is an M.2 SATA 32280 in size. And you can just make out where our heatsink assembly is. I'll give you another shot of that shortly. So you can just see this chip here on the motherboard. That is our eight gigabytes. That single chip is eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So of course it's not going to be in dual channel just being a single chip there. You can see they do have space on the motherboard there, that if they were gonna add another eight gigabytes here, that would then give us, of course, 16. But it would have been nice if Chewy at least had put two four gigabit chips in here, gigabyte chips in there, sorry, so we could actually have dual channel there. So that is a disappointment. Now there is no upgrades with this particular model here, nothing apart from adding that 2.5 inch drive or swapping out and using another SATA 3. Now this slot will actually fit in an NVMe drive, but it doesn't work. Now from this angle here, I am able to show you that we do have two copper transfer pipes right there. So the heatsink at the back. So this fan at the top is sucking in the cool air from all around the case. So good in terms of case cooling, there's a lot of space around here and that then blows the hot air out of the back, which I will show you now. So there's a large exit vent we've got here, and it does a good job of pushing out that hot air. We have two USB 3, two USB 2 ports on the rear, and two HDMI. Now, it's only HDMI 1.4 A spec, and that means it's just 4K 30 hertz output, not 4K 60 HDMI 2, unlike their website with those two there. Gigabit LAN and two audio in and out ports, and here is the power and of course to power it. So I would have liked to have seen some USB ports on the front of this mini PC and even a micro SD card or SD card slot reader would have been great, but that's sadly missing. So what I'm showing you right here are the two wireless antennas. So we've got wireless AC on this with Bluetooth 4.2. Good location of those antennas where the plastic is on the front of it. So you should get quite good reception as long as you point it towards your wireless router. I'm not having any problems with signal strength with this one. 
And our bias, so this mini PC has nothing exciting at all because it is a completely locked down bias. What I mean by that? Well, we don't have any advanced tab open to us. So what we've got is just security, boot menu, and that is it. So if you were gonna be running Linux, say off a pen drive first to boot it, of course, then you have to go in here. It's just, you hit delete on boot, gets you into our BIOS menu, and then you simply go to the boot over ride right here to select that boot pen drive or Windows 10 pen drive or whatever. So when you do first power this on, you're greeted with the Windows setup screen, of course, and these are the pre-installed language packs. You don't have to download them, and there's plenty there that should cover most bases. Okay, so here we are in Windows. I wanted to point out that, yes, it is running Windows 10 Home, so it's not pro version, didn't expect it. You wouldn't either for this price point, and the version is 1909. So yes, do run Windows 10 updates just to get the latest version. I also do recommend that you jump onto Intel's site and run the driver update utility. That will give us the latest uh, driver there for the Iris graphics that this uh, one has. So in the memory here configuration, as I showed you, it's just a single chip there. So 100% just single channel, unfortunately. 1600 megahertz DDR3. I mean, but this is a dated spec. We're talking about a CPU here that is five generations old now that they are using, even though it does have Iris graphics. It still would have been great to see the RAM configured in dual channel. They could have gone with maybe two four gigabyte chips on there. So we have about 100 uh, megabytes of the RAM is dedicated to that uh, GPU. But of course, it is shared with the system RAM, so that will fluctuate that percentage there. Looking in the device manager, so there you see the Core i5 5257U maximum turbo is a uh, three point one gigahertz, very low now for 2020 standards, and it's only dual core. And it's kind of incredible that I'm looking at a dual core, a little mini PC desktop one, when most of them, all of them ones I look at now, at least quad core here, but it does have the four threads. So the wireless card is the dual band AC3165. This is very common. So transfer speeds with my router, this will vary a little bit. You're looking at about 340 realistically megabits per second. We do have real tech gigabit LAN that I also showed you when you had a look, we had a look at the back there. And here is our drive, so it's a NETAC. And this one, the speeds, benchmarked it here with nothing going on in the background. Uh, that's fine, okay, for SATA 3. The write speeds are maybe a little bit low compared to say a, a Samsung or Kingston or other brand. Um, but overall, that's not too bad considering the spec of this now, it kind of would be pointless to have an NVMe drive in this. Okay, so with this particular CPU, you can install Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, but you cannot increase our power limits, okay? So power limit level one, 28. Level two is 35. That's just the short boost. Cannot really do anything here. Now you can undervolt if you wanted to, to help maybe the thermals, but really it makes no difference. And thermals are excellent. It is super hard, very hard in fact, to get this to go over say 65 or to 70 degrees. So it runs very cool all the time. And later on, I'll tell you about the fan noise, but when it's idle, it is very, very quiet. You can't actually hear it. So they've done a pretty good job with the cooling there, Chewy. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. Geekbench four score, nothing amazing, especially in 2020. You gotta remember that this particular CPU, it came out in September 2014. It's only a dual core, so that's why the multi-core score is a bit low, and it's just 3.1 on the turbo there, so that's why this score is really uh, and nothing amazing there. Now the open CL scores, you can actually, one thing you can do is increase the clocks. So what I did is a tiny little bit of a tweak here. So when you go into graphics, it's by default our multiplier here, just 10.5, but we can increase it to 11.5, and that is times 1000 megahertz. So we can get it over to about 1.15 or so gigahertz on the, the clock there. It does have one gigabyte of RAM allocated, well, dedicated uh, with this Iris graphics as well. So that was the overclock score. That is the default, the 3,384. Not too much of a difference, but I mean, that's something at least we can do to squeeze out a tiny bit of extra power for nothing. And here is Geekbench 5. So a very modest kind of score. Now, system performance in general, 
it does actually feel quite snappy and quick. Going to the start menu, it pops up nicely. And I do have the original drivers and image that I'm showing you. I went through and installed all my different applications. However, one thing I didn't bother with, and that is Adobe Premiere Pro. I won't show you that because editing on, a, on such a chip like this, even though, okay, it's got the Iris graphics, is very choppy and the playback's choppy and it's just not recommended for 4K video editing. So Cinebench, I did test these ones out. So Cinebench R15 here first, a very low score as expected for only two cores, four threads, 278, and then R20. So that's 545 points there. Again, yes, low, very low, uh, especially compared to some of the other mini pieces I have been reviewing, the AMDs that have quad cores, eight threads, can do a bit better there. And even that last 10th gen Intel that I did review was quite good. Now, when you have a look at document performance, so spreadsheets and things like that, this general kind of light computing is what this is perfectly fine at. It's not actually bad at all. So maybe you see a little bit of slowdown sometimes with a very large document file doing some edits, selecting, copying, pasting, but really you should not uh, have any issues, issues with this at all. So typing there, that's not gonna be a problem. No real lag there with the spreadsheets as well. So all the benchmarks I did show you, I ran them, of course, just by themselves. So there's nothing that's going to affect the performance. What about media file playback? So video playback, not its strength, of course, because we don't have hardware native HEVC decoding with this, and we don't have VP9 decoding. So playing a jellyfish file here, the sample files, is 10-bit HEVC. Uh, very poor performance here. It will always be like this, just a little bit stuttery all the time. It's just dropping frames like crazy. And that is only uh, 60 megabits per second. If I try the 140, it's just a real mess then. That's just way too demanding. That's basically, this is maxing out our CPU, running something like that. But if you play, for example, okay, what about an MKV file? That is actually gonna play with no problems. That's gonna be fluid and fast there. So it's really just the HEVC. So it's not a recommended media playback device, unfortunately, this one. I mean, if it did have a more modern 8th gen CPU, we would have that hardware decoding and it would perform there a lot better than it currently is. So I'll quickly bring, you, bring up here information from HW Info just to show you that uh, RAM, okay, there's thermals there too, excellent. You can see it's 64s being the max. But we'll look at that later on. Oh, I just minimized the whole thing. Uh, the RAM, however, that is, uh, when I take a look at it here, definitely is single channel. I okay, need to get this out of the way. Just close that off. You can see right there that it's definitely single channel. That Just that chip that I showed you in the beginning, have a look at the internals. However, Chewy advertised it as, as having dual channel RAM, and it doesn't. But let's have a look now at just one game I'm going to test out. That is Counter-Strike Global Offensive and we'll see how the gaming performance is with this Iris graphics with its one gigabyte there of RAM. So this is 720p. It is on the lowest settings, and we're getting about, look at this, 40 frames per second or so. This is not brilliant. It is, okay, it is playable, but the Vega 8 graphics in that Ryzen 5, the 2500U I reviewed, for example, that costs about, what, 30, maybe 40 US dollars more is so much better than this and can run the game in 20, 1080p, playable frame rate at least as well. Let's see if I can actually kill this guy. Nah, he managed to get me. But yeah, not really that brilliant for gaming. I mean, the Iris, the 6100 is a very dated GPU. I mean, this, this chipset came out in September 2014. Now, power use with this one, I am seeing an idle of about 7 to 8 watts, which is not bad. So right now, gaming and Counter-Strike is where you will see about 37, 36 watts maximum use from the wall. Fan noise, it's not bad when it is idle. It is very quiet. When you're gaming or you're doing something demanding, that is when you'll hear the fan. But the cooling is excellent on this mini PC. I mean, it doesn't go over 65 degrees Celsius. But here's a sample of the fan at full load.
All right, just a couple of things to add that I did test out Linux on this, it runs fine. I also installed a 2.5 inch drive because I wanted to test that out if it was gonna be working fine at the proper set of three speeds, just in case. But guess what? It wouldn't even boot past the initial just chewy BIOS screen there. And I couldn't even get into the BIOS. So something's up with my unit here that when you plug in a 2.5 inch drive, it will simply just not boot. That's bad. So it might need a BIOS update, maybe it's just my unit, I do not know. So as a mini PC with this dated old tech, I don't really know what Chewy is thinking. They must have made a, a really good deal with Intel to get such old chips. Maybe they only had to pay like a, a couple of US dollars per actual chipset, and that is why we're seeing it in here. But Chewy, if you are watching this video, that um, please maybe try and go for at least an eighth gen, because the eighth gen chips do have the native decoding. So there are a few misleading things from Chewy. First off, they said that it's a metal case. And well, yeah, there is metal just on the top of it. That is it. The rest is 100% plastic. Now the case I do actually like. I think it's quite a cool little design. And the cooling in this is very, very good. I like the fact it looks like a little mini desktop. And the thermals are absolutely excellent. Really good. It's only got the two cores on this and that is probably helping. So it will not go over my testing over 65 degrees Celsius. I mean, I could push it all day and it just will simply not go over that with ambient 26, 25 degree temperatures, that is. So the other things that are misleading, well, HDMI 2 spec is what is listed on their website and it's not HDMI 2, it's HDMI 1.4 across both of them. And if you're gonna be using both the HDMI outs, I don't think you can actually get two outputs of 4K. I think it's gonna go down then to 1440p. So that really, uh, and it's not good at all, that's misleading. Now video playback, terrible. If it's VP9 or HEVC, it's gonna be choppy mess because it's not native decoding support. Performance wise, yeah, okay, light computing is all right. It's not actually too bad, it feels quick enough. So your spreadsheets, Chrome, documents, general kind of use like that, and even YouTube does run well on this, but why on earth would you get a fifth gen CPU, a fifth gen tech, buy that kind of laptop uh, in 2020, you just wouldn't. So I cannot recommend this mini PC at all. I think you're better off getting uh, the AMD that I have reviewed, which costs about 30 US dollars more than this one, but you have two 4K, genuine 4K HDMI 2 out, so that's 4K 60 hertz. You have a quad core with eight threads. You also have better gaming performance, better integrated graphics. The Vega 8 that is on that particular mini PC performs so much better than even the Iris graphics. This Iris graphics is very dated and even with a little bit of an overclock, you're still getting 720p as I showed you with Counter-Strike, just yeah, bad performance. It's not really that good at all. So that is a mini P to consider, and also this one up here, which is a 10th gen Intel, if you want to stick with Intel. So check out those reviews. And well, it's sad that I was kind of expecting this kind of result, but I wanted to review it just so people know the full story with this one here. Thank you so much for watching.